So One Punch Man Chapter 180 is officially here and the fight between Saitama and Tatsumaki is just continuing to rage on. I've got to be honest and say every chapter that we get from Murata feels so clean and crisp and just high quality like it's genuinely just hard to believe that we get this level of quality on a regular basis. But Saitama and Tatsumaki continue this scrap in the middle of the desert with Tatsumaki telling Saitama that there is absolutely no way she can entrust Fubuki to him in typical overbearing sister fashion that she's known for. And honestly, I could probably get behind a little romance angle between Fubuki and Saitama, with Tatsumaki as the overbearing third wheel sister-in-law in the relationship, because this fight between them gives like major sibling vibes or in-law vibe with the way that they're just squabbling and arguing all the time. But we see Saitama getting annoyed and thinking to himself how he just wants to go home, and Tatsumaki continues to just air juggle. Saitama across the land with multiple psychic blows and I said it before and I'll say it again there's just something about the fluid motion that's drawn in these panels that just makes One Punch Man's art just stand out so much against other manga that are out right now it's crazy but we cut back to Fubuki who's thinking about what Tatsumaki had said to her just before her fight with Saitama had broken out and about her Fubuki group being too weak with her saying how Tatsumaki has now told her to cut ties so she will probably never back down with her being as stubborn as she is and Fubuki then tells her group that they're too weak to protect her and that they are completely useless and you know why she's doing it but honestly it feels really cold like she's took a leaf out of her sister's book to pull off such a cold move and she ends up just flying away out of the hole that Saitama created by manhandling Tatsumaki out of the complex that they're in and tells her group not to follow her and I genuinely just wouldn't be surprised if they did collectively just ignore that order and did follow her anyway given their massive loyalty to her which which over to N City, presumably a fair bit away from where Saitama is right now. And we see Feather, who's had his ass handed to him by a bunch of random thugs called the Iron Fist group, claiming to be the top gang in N City. And it turns out that Feather was there to rescue a woman called Erica. It also turns out to have been playing him and is actually the wife of the boss of the Iron Fist gang. Honestly, that felt like an actual mouthful to say, and I probably should have timed my breath in a little bit better on that one. But Feather starts laughing and calls Erica a lousy actor, and we see Erica crying as the big boss of the Iron Fist gang rocks up and is ready to finish this man off. And as Feather stands up and is ready for his big climax, as he calls it, kind of sussy choice of words, if you ask me, I would called it to be honest there wouldn't anyway uh but he gets ready to face off against this big iron here and not on order that saitama bursts through the wall through the brick wall and lays feather completely out and naturally in true sibling like fashion with tatsumaki not far behind them them two start arguing again about who blasted through the wall and truly honestly i've said this before but i'm so down with the interactions between this two it's just the ill-tampered tatsumaki and the nonchalant saitama Armor just makes such a good pairing it to see on these panels. It really is enjoyable. Naturally, Big Iron decides he's gonna smack Saitama, and obviously, we all just know how that is gonna go. Saitama just smacks him back and sends that man flying. He sends that boy packing, and the gang then tries to attack the pair of them, with Tatsumaki telling them to just shut up because they're in the middle of something right now. And honestly, this is one of my favorite tropes in manga and anime having two characters who are ridiculously powerful stop their fight to smack some PNs around because they got in their way. We saw it happen with Kenpachi and Byakia in Bleach and honestly that was one of my favourite moments where they stopped arguing to cut down Yami. It was a really fun moment and I love seeing these kind of moments in manga like this. But then we swap over to H-City where this massive disaster level dragon kens on rat is absolutely obliterating the terrain. At this point I have to wonder whether Gotham City would be safer or One Punch Man's world would be safer to live in because the rate of destruction and crime that is in both of these worlds makes you wonder whether the price of housing and rent is so cheap to live it's got to be crazy let me know in the comments below what you think about that one but we get to see metal bat again it feels like it's been way too long since he's been on the panels and he is sprinting full tilt to go and take care of this giant monster and he's more concerned about his cat that's supposed to be having kittens today and honestly i can't blame the man. that's good priorities right there i would rather be there for my cat or my dog i was about to give puppies or kittens rather than fighting some big ass Sonic the Hedgehog wannabe. But Metal finds this little Sonic the Hedgehog here and starts screaming about how far he's had to run to get here with all the transport being cut off because of the disaster going on. And as he's screaming at this monster and pointing his bat at it, the monster's just looking at him like, what are you even talking about?
talking about here. Saitama and Tatsumaki come flying in and annihilate it. Simply flying through its head, cutting metal bat speech dead in its tracks. And the way this is like panelled, it reminded me of Zod and Superman flying through the buildings in the Man of Steel film, which is a great film, by the way, if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. But again, Saitama and Tatsumaki arguing about destroying everything with Saitama saying that this is the reason we went outside in the first place, because we didn't want to destroy anything. And then we cut back to Metal Bart, who's just trying to calm himself down. You can see him seething with rage while he's walking down, walking home to his cat. Honestly... This was a solid One Punch Man chapter, and it's been a pleasure to read, as always, as they always are, and I do wonder how far this fight will continue to go here, whether it's going to get more and more intense, or somehow we'll see it get diffused, possibly in the next couple of chapters by Fubuki or someone else. But that is everything from me. Let me know what you thought of the chapter in the comments down below, and if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe, as that truly, truly does help me out on the channel. And, as always, I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Much love, big kisses. Bye-bye.